Hey everyone, and welcome back to Gearbox, finally. Um, I was working on the T3, but I got kind of annoyed with trying to do the bodywork and stuff, but either way. I've been looking for a video to do, and a comment someone left on one of my videos gave me an idea for a video. Um, they asked for a suggestion on how to deal with Torque Twist. So what Torque Twist is, is it's when you hit the throttle and the vehicle, the front of the vehicle lifts and the whole vehicle also twists to the right because of the torque of the engine. You can see this especially with like transport trucks or drag cars and stuff like that. Um, I'll have a, I'll have put a video in with the whole post-processing thing and I'll show it in a moment. But either way, when designing vehicles, it's something you have to take account for because it can break parts, it can throw things off, and so on. So I did my best to explain it replying to the con the comment, but with my issues it's hard for me to express things verbally, especially written. So I thought I'd make an actual video on it. And I'd also like to thank them because it also led to me making a 4x4 version of my 6x6 that I've been kind of working on. So, first, one thing that I like to do to kind of mitigate torque twist is a more realistic engine mount. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, I need an engine to show this with, so let's grab this big six cylinder because a big engine will be easier to show it with. So, um, Engines are typically mounted either like a solid mount. That was loud. Um, really quick, if you hear anything in the background, it's either the game or the thunderstorm outside. Either way. So, you can either mount something solid to the chassis, which is what people typically do in games, or you can use a mount like this with these springs to simulate a normal, typical, like, rubber engine mount, which allows the engine to move a little bit, making it feel smoother and less harsh for your, your driving enjoyment, let's say. Um, doo -doo -doo, here's an example, you can see the bar there, there's that, and then the spring, and then it attaches to the chassis. And then I usually put one on the back just to keep it all level and stuff. Um, do, 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 do. And then this is just a big heavy trailer that I've been working on that I figured would be good for showing this. So, I am going to take this. I'm also going to show it with my page in a minute. But, either way, if I... I keep forgetting to disable the clamp angle. So, if I take this thing connect it to the trailer like so I also need to lock the bed to this there we go okay so if we go like this start the truck take the parking brake off and if I just hit the throttle you can see how the front lifts and goes to the right Oops, stalled. Come on. Alright, so you can see the front lifts and it leans to the right. So, one way to mitigate that is, as I just mentioned, the rear sway bar. And the front one helps a little bit too, but not quite as much. So if we do this again... Actually, I want to move this oops, back a little bit. Wow, that is not level, but whatever. So if we try again, you'll notice that it doesn't lift 
or lean quite as much. Come on. I just stalled again. So it's not leaning quite as much. This would probably be better to show with my Jeep. Or Peach or whatever. Um, so, doo -doo -doo. I'm also going to go again, but I'm going to lift the cab this time so you can see the engine. You can kind of see how the intake and exhaust... Well, they were moving a little bit, but if I do that, you can see how they're moving. That's because of the springs on the engine mounts. If it was hard mounted, it wouldn't do that. So doing that allows the engine and whatnot to twist separately from the chassis, removing a bit of the torque twist. And so on. So if I go do, 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 like this and just crank these all the way up so it's like a hard mount or solid mount, um, a lot of drag cars, race cars, whatever, often they will use a plate either on the front of the end, usually on the front, or the back of the engine to hard mount it so that they can put more of the torque to the wheels. But now, if I do the same thing, You'll notice it doesn't move nearly as much. Instead, the entire truck is kind of rocking back and forth. So if we lower the cab again, take the parking brake off, it should rotate the whole truck even more, or twist the whole truck. Just a little bit more, and it is. So between those two things, it reduces the torque twist a lot. But it also tends to reduce your usable torque to the wheels a little bit. Um, I'm also going to disable the front one really quick just because. Move this back. Alright, so this should show it fairly well. Yeah, and now it's rotating a lot. Just because of those two simple little things. And those are the two main things that I would suggest, is using springs for softer engine mounts, and then your sway bars. Um, Another thing that you can do to help prevent it is adjust your suspension itself. One thing they do with drag racing is they'll make the right spring and or shock a little bit stiffer than the left so that it takes more weight and torque and stuff to compress it, therefore allowing you to use more of the torque. Um, if I grab this, it should work. Oops. Where's the exhaust? There. Alright, so if I hit throttle... Oops, that's not throttle. Come on. Here we go. I have the engine rotating the wrong way, I think. But you can still see this thing twists quite a bit. And again, if I stiffen everything... Oh, this is also hard mounted. But if I... Do this... Do, 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 do. Oops, I need to get rid of the clamp angle. So that it can actually move. And then the front one, or rear one, is there. Alright, so once again, it should... Wow. Just sitting in it's making it lean a lot because of the lack of sway bars. But now, if I just kind of shove it in gear, it leans a lot because of the torque twist, and you can see how much the sway bar was actually doing. Um, 
Another thing you can do, I'm gonna grab one of my other ones because it'll be a bit easier to show it with. Where's the four door? Oh, right there. So another thing you can do is adjust your links. Let's uh, change the color. So one thing you can kind of do is have your upper links a little bit shorter than the lower ones. And this will help with squat and the twist and stuff, I think. I know it'll, it can help with squat. So like, the body will roll backwards a little bit less if the upper ones are shorter, I think. I could be wrong. And it might help with twist. And then just whether it's a triangulated forelink or not, do, 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 like this thing over here. And this is what a triangulated forelink looks like. They make triangles. This is a fully triangulated forelink. Typically vehicles will have a half triangulated forelink, so the lower links will be straight, and then the upper links will be on an angle like this. And that just, it helps with articulation and roll and stuff. Um, but again, I haven't messed around with it much, so I'm not entirely sure. And then, same with independent suspension, I believe. Depending on your control arm length, whether it's A arms, a five link, whatever, the way you do it can change how it handles and how it deals with the torque and stuff. So, like I said, I would start with the, um, the engine mount having springs. I'll bring that back out again just to give a good look at it. This is how I typically do it. It's just a simple, nice simple design. And then go with your sway bars, which I will grab the page axle. Do, do, do. And then your sway bar. The further to the end of the axle, the more effect the sway bar will have. And then, again, with the length of this arm, different lengths will have different leverages and so on. And then you've got your spring. Normally with sway bars, it's just one torsion bar, but we don't have torsion bars, we have a kind of torsion spring. So yeah. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope it at least helps anyone that's been having this issue. Um, I guess that's all I can really say on it at the moment. Like I said, it's not something I've really experimented with. I just kind of have my way of building and it works for me. Everyone's got different things that work for them based off of the same principles and physics and stuff. So yeah. Either way, like I said, I hope that helps, and yeah, I got nothing else to say about it. So, my typical outro, out, nah, my typical outro crap. If you have any tips, tricks, questions, actually, anyone that watches this that does know more about this and has some advice on it, feel free to leave it in the comments. There's always room for constructive criticism. There's always room for advice and legitimately helping. Um, either way, I hope this helps, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.